evening, Panther families. My name is Miss Gerard. I'm principal here at Seminole Trails, and with me tonight is Miss Jennifer Lowe, our assistant principal. Welcome to Seminole Trails. And what we'd like to share with you is Seminole Trails reimagined as we move from distance learning back to brick and mortar. And I've heard parents talk about, I want my child to be back on campus to have a school experience, a social experience. And yes, all teachers want their children to be face-to-face -face for the best education possible. But we also want to be transparent and let you know it's not quite the same as when you and I went to school. You can see here to, that the cafeteria seating has been marked off so that students are socially distanced. You'll see a kindergarten classroom where there's one child per table, as well as our intermediate and ASD and primary classes have six feet distancing between desks. Our hallways have markers for our students to walk socially distanced. So as a child needs help with their shoes being tied, they'll have to be independent a little bit more than what you and I did as we grew up. So what will it look like when your child comes to campus? We will welcome our children as they come to campus. Our walkers and car pickup and drop off students will come to the front gate. We have a single point of entry for safety. Our students riding buses will depart from the bus in the bus loop area. At that time, all students should be wearing a facial covering. Students riding the bus will be required to wear the facial covering while on the bus and will be given assigned seating. As the students come through the gate, we will once again ensure that they have their facial covering. And this is for the safety of our students and our staff. In the past, during the first weeks of school, we've also welcomed students and parents to walk to class. However, we're not able to do that, except for our pre-K and our ASD students. Those students will be greeted by staff and parents will be coming to the east side parking lot, our side ESE parking lot. Parents must walk certain students to class for approved drop off and pickup. Those students and parents will receive a badge at the gate and the parent will be permitted to walk to a designated location for drop off where staff will meet their students. Pre-K students will be met at the east door of building 10, a straight shot from the ESC parking lot gate. Our ASD students will walk directly to room 3111 where we have a receiving room set up. It's on the corner and then they will directly depart. In the past, they've been permitted to walk the child to the classroom. Unfortunately, we're not able to do that this year. Our ASD and pre-K students will have breakfast ordered and picked up by staff and students will eat breakfast in their classrooms. As I mentioned, all students must wear a facial covering at all times. The district is providing five washable face coverings per student, however you may provide your own, as long as they follow CDC guidelines. That means that they must be at least three layers of breathable material, fit snugly to the sides of the face, and be secured with ties or ear loops that allow the children to be hands-free. That means also that according to health guidelines, neck gaiters, open face triangle bandages and mesh materials, masks that may have valves or holes are not acceptable face coverings. Please note that face coverings are in addition to and not a substitute for required social distancing. So we appreciate your support in teaching your children these things before arriving to campus. Students will receive a free grab and go breakfast our walkers, once they come in the gate, will be directed to the cafeteria, as will our car riders. Our gate opens at 7.30. Bus students will pick up a free grab-and-go breakfast at the mobile serving cart in the bus loop. Once picking up their breakfast, all students will proceed directly to class and wait outside the classroom door using social distancing. Once again, those dots you saw painted in the hallways are to assist our students. When students enter the classroom, they will sanitize their hands and eat breakfast at their desk. Students are only permitted to remove their facial covering while seated and while eating. As soon as they are finished eating, they should put their mask back on. So once again, the classrooms look different. 
the school district is taking action to protect the health, safety, and welfare of students and personnel. Certain measures will be needed to reduce the risk of exposure and spread of COVID-19. All schools will begin with student deaths at six feet apart. As the need arises to place additional students in classrooms, schools will follow guidelines as outlined by the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics. So here's a peek inside a third grade classroom and a primary classroom. What happens when students are in the classroom? Again, it will look a little different that they'll remain socially distanced throughout the day. Movement will be limited. We're not able to conduct small group at tables, so students will constantly receive their instruction from their desk. Teachers may be teaching face-to-face -face students in the building while also teaching distance learning students. Teachers will use an audio enhancement mic to ensure volume and clarity while wearing a facial covering. This is for our students in the classroom as well as our distance learning students. And our teachers have received guidance and direction following a district scope and sequence for the instruction of the Florida standards. And so all students across the district will receive the same instruction as well as the same district assessments to monitor student progress. In our pre-K ESE kindergarten classes, you'll understand that they are smaller children we will be ensuring the cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting following national standards. And that includes things like toys and games. Students will work in defined spaces, although they don't have desks, and will have no share supply bins for students at center activities. As always, we ask that parents provide a change, clean change of clothing, and children who are napping do not have to wear a mask at that time. Different students have different habits, so if they are resting but not sleeping, those students will have to wear a facial covering. Teachers will ensure that students are resting in a head-to-toe arrangement. Once again, we as teachers will use visuals and positive reinforcement to teach things that you are teaching at home, like hand washing, mask wearing, social distancing, and other routines for safety. This is how school and parents can work together. In our K2 classes, we have purchased headphones in that no share supply mindset. And in three through five, we purchased a set of earbuds since students will be working using digital assignments. Students will use their own materials, pencils, scissors, any supplies, they will not be shared. That digital assignments will continue and we are strongly discouraging the use of paper assignments and paper materials. Students will bring their Chromebook and charger to school each day fully charged. We will be asking teachers to label each Chromebook and charger. Now, some of our parents have been working with students at home on a personal device. If students have been using a personal device, we will provide a district device as the district's goal is to be one-to-one -one throughout the district. And parents, please help us to take care of these items, just like textbooks that are issued, and teach the proper care of the Chromebook with your students. You may wish to provide a caring case. Students will continue to receive any support for students with disabilities, those students learning English in the same manner as written into their plan. For our students who may need some extra support, we will provide those services as well. Later on in the year, our Title I funds will provide after-school tutoring to select students and grade levels. Okay, our students as they enter lunch will be given hand sanitizer to make sure their hands are nice and clean. There will be markings on the floor to help our students remember to socially distance as well as arrows to help them get to their seats. Um, our cafeteria staff will assist students individually with their lunch choices so that students are not touching food that isn't theirs. Um, students will walk directly to their seats and when they are seated, they, remove, they may remove their facial covering. Um, we encourage parents to talk to your child about how to properly remove their facial covering and how to store it while they're eating. Um, it's recommended that the part that is touching their face 
Um, they fold their mask so that part isn't touching the table. Um, some parents may want to purchase um, like eyeglass holders that they can clip to the mask so that they could just remove it and the mask stays close to them. And, and staff will also help reinforce um, these best practices. Um, students will not be permitted to share food. Our cafeteria staff will be dis, uh, disinfecting tables between classes and all students will receive free lunches and breakfast until December of this year. Um, it won't be necessary for them to enter their numbers, um, their PIN number as they have in the past. For recess, students will be given a brief recess. Um, again, this will not look exactly how recess has looked in the past, but our students will get some time to um, exercise, run to the fence, take a walk. Um, they will wear their facial coverings, um, but sports that require contact or activities that require student contact will not be permitted. They are not able to use the playground equipment at this time um, just to keep everybody safe from you know, the transfer of germs. And some teachers may do indoor recess with um, activities like go noodle, brain breaks, or just dance activities. For fine arts, our students participate in art, music, PE, media, and guidance. They have the same fine art for the week. The teachers will be coming to the, the homeroom classroom so that students will not be um, going to various classrooms throughout the day. And any materials that the students will be using will be sanitized um, or will be used for, for that file for the week. For dismissal, we will be using a staggered dismissal schedule. This is to ensure that our hallways are not too crowded and that we're able to maintain social distancing. So to give our parents um, some notice ahead of time, um, for a car pickup, our students will begin coming out at two o'clock for our, our car pickup students. Um, parents will be given signs that you will put in the window of your car so we can call out the student's name and they will come to you. Our walkers will be to the walker gate about 2.10. Our school day does end at 2.05, so it'll take a few minutes for them to get to the walker gate. Um, if there is light rain, um, students will be dismissed. However, if there is a lightning or thunderstorm warning, we receive updates um, from the National Weather Service. If there is one of those warnings, we will keep the walkers and bikers in the media center. And when that warning is lifted, um, we will release students. Social emotional learning and mental health services. Um, many of our students have experienced many different things um, in their own personal lives, uh, you know, understanding the pandemic. Um, and we want to support our students. Each day from 8 until 8.30, our students participate in a morning meeting. Many of you have seen your students participating in these through distance learning, um, but this is a way that the teacher builds classroom community. They do greetings with one another. They share about various topics. They engage in group activities. Um, and this has been proven to help increase social awareness, reduce bullying, and also increase attendance. Um, if your child is in need of individual counseling or small group counseling, please contact the school and we will get you in touch with our social service, our student services um, teachers and staff. The Make Your Choice portal um, tile is how you will let us know if your student will be coming to school um, brick and mortar or if they will remain in distance learning. We ask that all parents tell us their initial choice so we can plan for your students um, return to campus. If you do need to change your mind, um, if a student is moving from brick and mortar back to distance learning, that can happen very quickly by you changing your choice in the portal. If you are moving from virtual learning to brick and mortar, the school will need one week to make that change. So you will go into the portal, you'll change um, your selection, and um, the school will communicate with you in terms of, of making that change. That may be necessary depending on our shifts in enrollment, um, how many students we have coming back to the building, that a teacher change may be necessary and we would communicate that with the family. Safety measures. This is very, very important and we ask that parents are please cooperating with us um, to keep our students safe and our staff safe. Um, before the child comes to school each morning, 
you need to self monitor your child, ask them questions. Um, if they have a temperature of 100.4 or higher, they need to stay home. Um, if they have a sore throat, a cough, headache, diarrhea, body ache, shortness of breath, fatigue, a loss of appetite, smell, or other flu-like symptoms, we ask you to please keep your child home. Facial coverings are mandatory for all students. If your child has a documented medical condition that would prevent them from being able to wear a mask, please contact the school and we will begin the 504 process. If a student refuses to wear a face mask or facial covering or mask, we will work with the family and the student to help correct that situation. However, families should know that if a child does refuse to wear one, that student may return to distance learning. If students are exhibiting symptoms of COVID while in school, they will be sent to the school nurse. The school nurse will assess the child. And if the child is indeed exhibiting these symptoms, they will be moved to an isolation room. This is to prevent any exposure um, to other students while in the classroom or on campus. The parent will be notified to come and pick up their child. The parent will come to the school, remain in their car, call the school main office number, and we will bring the child out to you. If a child does have a positive COVID case, it is your responsibility to notify us within one day, within one school day, and we will follow our protocols and procedures on our end, which would involve talking to you and the child to determine where the child has been, if it's on the school bus, um, within what classroom for the day, and that child will remain in distance learning until they test negative and can show us the negative test results or they remain symptom free. That includes no fever of 100.4 or higher for at least 10 days. Visitors, visitors are going to be very limited this year uh, for the safety of our students and staff. Any visitors on campus must be approved by the principal in advance. Most meetings will be held virtually with the teacher um, via the computer or on the phone. We ask that all visitors do self-screen before coming to campus. That means asking yourself those questions. Have I had any symptoms? Have I traveled? Um, and once you get to the school, please be prepared that your temperature will be taken and you will be asked those same screening questions. Approved uh, visitors must also wear facial coverings at all times and follow social distancing guidelines. Parent volunteers are always very important to us, but for this time, um, we are not going to have any parent and volunteers and guardians on campus. Um, so we do appreciate you, but unfortunately this year, we will not be able to have those um, helpers on campus. Parents, we hope that we have answered questions that you have about the return to brick and mortar. Of course, you always have that choice. So we wanted you to know what our safety measures are as you consider having your children return to brick and mortar. During brick and mortar and distance learning, it's always so important that we work together. So we ask that you make sure that your contact information is updated. So if you aren't receiving parent link calls, please contact our data processor at 598-7000 to update that information. We often send emails. If you're not receiving those, please contact us. You see that our email address at the school is listed. And so if you have questions, that's a convenient way to correspond with us. We hope that you will always support our school by checking the items listed on our school calendar and at our website. Of course, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. And you'll also be hearing about the School Advisory Council and PTO, Parent Teacher Organization. We want our parents to be involved as partners in our school. The School Advisory Council is a decision-making body, but it's also informational. We love to have our parents attend and give us input onto the decisions that we're making as a school. And with Parent Teacher Organization, you're our boosters. We need you to cheer on our teachers and our students. So once again, we want to thank you. You have our email address if there are any questions that we have not answered. Have a wonderful evening, and we look forward to seeing you virtually 
and in person. 